Hi everyone, welcome back to the photo book review. Um, this review we're going over a book by photographer Milton Rigovin. Um, and the specific body of work we're going over is called Triptychs. Um, we're reviewing this book because it's fascinating how simple it is in form, but how powerful it is in, in message. It's triptychs, uh, photographs of individuals across 30 years. And um, Sometimes books that are simple in form can really highlight the, the conceptual power or thematic power. And so, yeah, let's get into it and look at Milton Rigovin's book, Triptychs. Pretty simple book. I don't have the slipcover on this because this is a, a library copy. But, yeah, no curveballs here. Triptychs. So Milton Rigovin uh, has conceptualized this work around showing three images um, arranged next to one another uh, for visual or conceptual effect. So they're, they're having a conversation. Um, you see triptychs, diptychs, and, mo and more images uh, put together all across art, um, but it's especially common in photography. So Milton Rigovin uh, is a really interesting and fascinating person. Um, he's deceased. Um, my interest in this book came from my interest in Gregory Halpern's Zizix, uh, which you can watch here on the channel too. But um, Milton Rigovin was an optometrist near the Lower West Side of Buffalo, which is where this book is located. He had an op optometry practice for uh, years in the city. He also served in World War II in the Army uh, for two or three years. Also a communist. Shortly after World War II, was the librarian for the Communist Party um, in his area. He was actually, during the Red Scare, drawn uh, or requested to come before the House of Un-American Activity, where he was kind of characterized and blacklisted as the Big Red in Buffalo, the Big Communist. And he, he was uh, a social issues or what motivates Milton Rigovin's work. He photographs... He photographed uh, steel workers in the area. He photographed the poor of Central America, photographed storefront churches in um, Buffalo, storefront uh, African-American churches, where he made the photographs and a friend, colleague of his, made sound recordings, kind of as a sociological study. This book was published in oh, 1994. And it's the product of an exhibition at the School of the Art Institute Chicago. And it was also shown in, in Buffalo at the uh, university's gallery there. Before we get into the thick of it, uh, you'll notice on the uh, contents page, there's a lot of text. We go 37 pages before we get to the photographs. And I actually think that's maybe one difficulty of this book. Each of these texts is worth reading, certainly. Uh, Robert Coles was a friend of Milton Rigovin. Um, he was a, a psychiatrist, a professor at Harvard, and a documentarian himself. And this text kind of goes over, or it reveals some biographical information that Robert Coles found Rigovin's photographs powerful in how compassionate and human they were. This, this doesn't feel, this book doesn't feel like a sociological study. Coles also makes an interesting point in photographing the poor community in the Lower West Side of Buffalo. Coles says this book's only about po poverty if you're a, a, a wealthier person. And so if you're impoverished yourself, you look at this book and it's more of a, a documentary or representation of your life. Um, but if uh, poverty is unfamiliar to you, then this book has an added theme of poverty. Gould, uh, Stephen Jay Gould, is actually a paleontologist and an uh, evolutionary biologist, also a Harvard professor. And he breaks down the biggest structures or themes in the book. And then Joanne, uh, I'm not going to try to pronounce that last name, but journalist who's sympathetic to Rogovin's politics. So a more left-leaning journalist who's editors of uh, socialist or bordering socialist magazines. What's interesting 
is as a journalist, she's gone back and interviewed some of the subjects in the book, which is fascinating. I think it's, it's a lot of ground and legwork. And you get to the point reading her text that you start to link some of the characters you're reading about with their portraits. And so th she does a great job at showing the social history of the neighborhood and the factual history of the neighborhood about the economy and, and when things went downhill. And then a photographer's note, which I'll go over. But yeah, it's, it's useful text, but it's a lot of text. And so look at all these, uh, just to get to the photographs, the um, uh, pages we have to turn, we're gonna be on page 38 to start the images. The photographer's note is just a really brief kind of uh, classic for the time, uh, information from the photographer. How he made these pictures, when he made these pictures. Milton Rigovin, um, here's the thesis of the work, returned to the lower uh, west side of Buffalo over the course of 30 years and photographed the same people across those years. He says that he wouldn't ask too many questions or get a biography of the individuals. Um, he was there more to photograph, but he asked them to pose and, um, and would return with portraits that they could keep. Um, and so it's, uh, he mentions it here that sometimes he would go back and the individuals couldn't be found because they had uh, they had overdosed or was in jail or were in jail or moved away or the couple that he photographed had split up. What I think is fascinating about this book is it's a essentially a longitudinal study in photography and it it shows a sustained curiosity and interest in a subject matter or a group of people really more than a subject matter. So uh, the photographs. So we start here. On the left page are the dates of each picture and then the images themselves. Uh, this work is so powerful familially and socially because you see kids grow up and you see parents grow older. And it's kind of self-referential in photography because oftentimes you'll see these photographs behind the subjects in their uh, homes. And we'll see later on that you'll see in the background of some of the homes, the previous photograph that Milton Rigovin had given them and they've hung it up on the wall. But it's just, uh, it's fascinating. Churches are settings for a lot of these photographs or church storefronts and living rooms. You can just see the, the growth that happens in an individual. It's really fascinating just to see how personalities develop or how children kind of assert themselves across time. And many times the, a baby in the first image has grown to be an adult and is holding a baby of their own. I think something that's really powerful about this work though is the family unit. Um, we've talked about this on in other books on the channel, but it's a really powerful institution in keeping people together and helping people to take care of one another. And that's what makes it so tragic when, when it doesn't work um, because we have that kind of instinctual expectation of it. I love this image, the mother, uh, a, a proud mother um, surrounded by her children, her boys arms crossed with the dog at their feet and the daughter kind of has the same look as her mother in the first picture and proudly holding a baby. I love these kind of photographs of adolescence too because you can see they're kind of trying to find themselves. This is this location in front of a, a little quickie mart or a jiffy mart. It's a common location for Milton. There's so many different types of families in this book. Or there, and there's also individuals. And I think Robert Coles talks about the humanity of this work. And it's very powerful. I, this book's kind of emotionally demanding. I had to pause halfway through it so that I could give each picture um, its, its due. But we see here a, a single father, at least judging by the photographs, uh, who's included and who's not included. 
and these early photographs are often so kind of gentle and provide a lot of context. The film that he's using in these earlier pictures is really soft and full of midtones. But father swaddling his baby girl, blanket on his stoop. And then you see um, some tension between his uh, teenage or late adolescent daughter and him. The body language is, is great. I love it. Um, looking very dapper himself. And what's great about this jump is the similarity in posing and clothing. He, I, th I actually think he looks younger here than he does here. And we see now that his daughter has daughters um, and the father right there. But yeah, I love that. It's almost like a typology um, across time. There's a lot of uh, Chicago White Sox gear that shows up in this book, which is interesting. Another father with his daughter. And I love um, the living room presentation in Milton Rogovin's photographs. I've, in interviews, I haven't been able to pin down how he negotiated that or maneuvered that with his subjects, but you always get the sense that there's something being communicated, um, cultural or economic standing, or, I mean, I don't mean to be intellectual about it, but everyone wants their living room to kind of represent what they care about. So uh, we have some text here, no fume, no working. So no fume hood, no working, uh, advocating for workers' health and safety. Um, this big uh, peacock blanket in the background. And then, you know, a little girl hugging her dad and a happy dad. And then uh, things get a little bit more awkward here. The, the posture is a little different. Um, still a tight squeeze on her father. And then over here, which I, I love, because um, we see more photographs. So we see what looks like a wedding photograph above the mantle, and it's, it looks to be the same mantle as well. It's just uh, refinished and recovered. And we see his daughter with her own children. And a younger man back here, maybe communicating that he's the father. He's in a military uniform and looks like maybe army and you'll see that occur in several pictures here. One of the themes of this book that the journalist covered well was there were less uh, work opportunities as the lower west side of Buffalo were, was vacated by businesses or bulldozed to combat blight. We see a lot of people finding escape and, and joining the military. Yeah, I love this jump across time. And we see oftentimes missing family members uh, present in the photographs in the background. Something that's interesting uh, about this book socially is how uh, the Lower West Side was made up of so many different uh, immigrant groups and nationalities. There's one story about, in the interview section of the book, about um, a man who navigated all of them. He said that uh, to the Italians, he would uh, say that he had a black godfather um, to the Puerto Ricans, he learned to speak Spanish. To the Greeks, he talked about a, a cousin he had who was Greek. And <laughs> kind of like a neighborhood like this is not ethnically or nationally monolithic. And there's different groups of people coming in and first and second generation immigrants. And they're all navigating each other. And it's really fulfilling to hear about and, and kind of dismisses preconceived notions about neighborhoods being so um, racially isolated. Um, some of them. I love this image here. Um, we see the same house in the background. Um, so you see kind of a change in time. All proud, I think. The, the wife has the same look and the same body pose, which I love. Here it looks like they're already in their, their 50s. And then so 30 years later, they might be in their 70s or their 80s here. And the husband's holding a photograph of their uh, wedding ceremony. And so what's another example of, of photographs within photographs and in a fixed moment, like an image, you can include a reference to a longer timeline by showing something older. The, in a lot of these images, you get the feeling that they're very comfortable around Rogovin and, and it almost feels like he just walked in on them and they were comfortable to be photographed him. 
Looks like he was maybe working in the yard and she was working in the house maybe, but looks like things were going on as opposed to here they're a little more finished in their clothing. Um, some individuals still had the cigarette in their mouth um, smoking inside. Oh, I, I really like this image. This is the first image in the book that highlights an individual. We see one single man across time uh, in a storefront and then uh, out in the storefront window and then out of the store. And then where he seems to be sleeping, the bed kind of seems like a nightstand, linoleum floor, a bed. Um, like I was saying, walking in on individuals still uh, even smoking a cigarette halfway through. There's like a, an outward representation of the man and then a domestic inward representation. And so how he is in public and then how he is inside. I think when I get an image like this, it's uh, fascinating to me because Rogovin's placing a dignity and a value on all individuals he's photographing. This book has lots of families, but it's not person does not have their value exclusively within their family. He's tracking this individual across 30 years. Um, imagine what it's like that someone is so interested and uh, keeps up with you that they want to make your photograph two times after the first one and tracks you down and finds you. Rugovin says when he was looking to find people again, he would show up on a corner in uh, the lower west side of Buffalo with prints and people would tell him uh, what happened to the individuals in the prints and where he might find them. Um, a growing family. So it's kind of an interesting contrast, like I mentioned, a single individual and then a growing family. And it, the parents only seem to get happier as time goes by. Um, and the babies have had babies here. Uh, I think you see this pose a lot with the young boys or the men in this image during the late eighties, a lot of arms crossed as kind of like a masculine self-awareness. And then you see them more sure of themselves in the other photographs, but of course, like the fashions, um, in the photograph, how they change hairstyles and men and women and clothes. Um, but I love this image towards, towards the, or present throughout the book. But in the third photograph, you see a little bit, of a change in technique and uh, maybe technology for Rugovin. He is using a flash and his films less soft and a little more, a little more harsh. And I think that's probably, he's, he's using a, a rolly flex for most of these photographs. He mentioned that he had started with a, a Hasselblad, but he quit carrying it in favor for the roll flex. Another image, these, First images almost always kind of feel like elegantly posed, alluding to a narrative, almost like a painting. And then these fo the third photographs are often uh, more upfront, confrontational, and kind of more obvious, direct, especially with the camera angle. You are also, it's interesting to notice, and this is something photography does so well, is you can, it captures detail, the lens just sucks in detail. You can see tattoos over time. So here we have a tattoo on this woman's wrist, Bob, and it's present in the last photograph too. Um, and you see kind of a cast of characters that enter or leave someone's life. Oh, this is a great one. So such a large family, 1973. Looks like empty nesters in 1985. And then you see them as grandparents here. And they're not holding a photograph, they're holding a painting. So this awesome portrait with them in the middle and then their grandchildren and great-grandchildren or their, uh, their children and grandchildren around them. And then a blown up picture of them both. What's often interesting to notice and indicates something about the subjects to the viewer of this book is the way Milton Rigovin uses internal or domestic items like this heater to uh, uses them as compositional elements. So he's not putting them directly in the middle of the frame. He's visually counterweighting them with an interesting object beyond just being a, a heater or a radiator. It's highlights and it's shadows and it's a shape. 
So it kind of balances out their more organic shape. Very stoic father. This is another, the, the photographs that he was making in the 70s just feel very uh, romantic in a visual sense. Um, really velvety shadows and uh, soft highlights. This storefront present in a lot of Rigovin's second pictures and first pictures was a Pentecostal church that was in Buffalo. And then you see here a very precise uh, domestic interior. So a tapestry above that shows a, a belly dancer, maybe in a harem. Um, and you see the individual on the bed, the woman. It's just, um, there's not a visual complexity or a conceptual complexity to this work. It's a simple message of how time affects an individual in so many ways, in age and location and life experience. It just doesn't get old. You, I, you just want to keep turning the page. What a privilege it is to have a technology that you can see what someone looks like over a course of 30 years. Another start of the family and then tracking the family, a very big family. This father here with the, uh, his shotgun shells and his, his hunting boots. So you can kind of trace too. The baby here would have to be the oldest in this picture. So maybe one of these girls, maybe this girl. A wedding uh, photograph, which is kind of interesting. That's the most maybe intentional photograph you see of a, of a couple here. Um, second photograph, an allusion to a man, uh, maybe not around at the time. And then you see uh, that character return. And what's interesting in portraiture especially, you can run a risk of reading too much into a portrait, right? It's very tempting to say that you feel someone's essence when you look at a portrait of them. But remember, it is quite literally a fraction of a second in that person's life, in that person's life. The narrative potential of an image is very powerful, but you don't derive the whole story from a single moment. The photographer alludes to it and how they photograph and the subject might allude to it, to how they're posed, but you don't know why this person's here her husband. You don't know why he's here in this one. Um, it's just not in the photograph. And so you, f you fill in the narrative. This is another uh, triptych that I love. This negative, what's interesting, a, a keen observer might notice, the negative is, is flipped. And so what's left is now right, and what's right is, is now left. Um, you see the reverse text, which I almost thought was another language. Um, I'm thinking Rigovin or the book editors flipped it to make this pose point uh, rightward along the timeline. But yeah, imagine, you know, Milton Rigovin started photographing this when he was 62 in the 70s. And so not only does Rigovin watch these people grow up, they see Rigovin grow older and sustain an interest in them. I think that's something really powerful socially and emotionally. Here's that uh, uh, storefront that's present in so many of his pictures. Never taking an easy approach of just photographing someone uh, directly in the center. He's using the frame to give context of where they're at. Oh, and I, I particularly love this image or the set of images. Um, Cause you see, I think it, this is the hippest uh, Brooklyn fashions right now. <laughs> Silver hair and the thick lenses. And uh, you could imagine him selling something artisanal uh, in Dumbo. But what he's doing here is he's tracking a cobbler or a, sh a shoe repairman. And then in the final one, you see a same expression. Um, and you see allusions to the family.
but what it this reminds me of a uh, early American paintings where burgeoning metalsmith might get their their portrait made in their place of work and presenting the the person in their environment like an environmental portraiture. In this triptych, you see a sustained interest interest in something. So you see this teenager who has, you know, the so, so so fashionable it hurts in the early 70s and then an interest in karate and then you see that interest in karate still present in the third picture and so uh, pictures of a, a match maybe um, this young confident man head tilted a little bit awesome hat and then you track him. Kind of that same off-kilter shoulder in all of these images. Here, the, the, you see a detail almost like there was a heart surgery or some kind of open chest surgery, that distinct scar. Sometimes it is hard to see whether or not it's the same individuals in the second and the third or the first and the third images. Sometimes you can identify uh, tattoos or jewelry or something that doesn't age. It stands the test of time, but this third photograph of all the third photographs in this book looks so much like his early first photographs. Mid cigarette. This is a, a, another great one. Um, tattoo that shows across time shirtless in the first and the third children included in the second. See in one of my notes. So there is a, a body of work, quartets, that Milton Rogovin found some of these individuals and photographed them for a fourth time as well. See what was a baby with a grandfather is now a grown man. Really here the grandmother's holding this the grandson and here the grandson's really holding the grandmother i think that's maybe one of the most emotional aspects of this book is that flip we'll get to another one later in the book just a boy just a boy sitting on the sidewalk we see this colt 45 can and a lot of images and then here you see a grown man with two sons This, this is a uh, triptych that shows characters kind of moving in and out and fathers that look like sons later on. We see here a, a boy without a father, his father holding him, and then in the third he's holding his child. So this is maybe the first example in the book where you see the second photograph displayed in the background of the third photograph. And you're, I think the, the woman's easiest to track in this one. Um, and you see uh, almost like an airbrushed painterly portrait of her above the uh, mantle. But I love that reference. So there's little details like that that make photography so interesting. Here we have a split. I'm um, uh, following the woman and then following the man. There's an interview in, in the front portion of this book that talks about how in the 50s, 60s, and even into the 70s, people in your neighborhood knew where you were, where you were going, when you'd be back. There was a sense of familiarity and safety. Um, and so what's interesting about that previous image is that Two, in, two teenagers uh, who grew up together stayed in the same town and started families. Then this third one uh, hints at a deceased. Yeah, Milton Rogovin photographed him, tracked him down, and then couldn't find him again. What's interesting about the way the book is published is you, is you see a faint square right here. 
Uh, I'll, I'm drawn to this photograph because it's a uh, it's such a simple representation of a wedding, similar to how my parents described their wedding. They got married in the church and then they had a reception in the backyard. And, you know, tux, wedding dress, family, and some Miller High Lives. Classic. A boy, a father, and then the father's son. Um, and you just, it's, it's wild to see how much the boy looks like the father at the same age. Uh, shape of his face, his hair, even the way he holds his smile. I love this image because the, the mother in this photograph has a very similar kind of body language to her daughter in this photograph who has a son. Um, yeah, I just love that picture. Rogovin again using context to describe what's going on, almost like a studio background. Another individual that he's tracked over time. This could be a Levi's ad right now. striking how much the daughter looks like the mother. Two friends that Rogovin kept track with over time and I um, I love all the text present in this in this kind of bar scene or this pool hall scene um, and then they're still friends across 30 years of time. So this image, I think, is actually one of the most powerful in the book. We see how a grandfather is pushing a stroller with his granddaughter. And in the final image, I mean, it's obvious that the roles are reversed. We see another reference to the military. We see the same smile in the grandfather, but you just think about how many how many grandparents often step up to the plate to raise uh, grandchildren. And they have each other. They had each other here, and now they have each other there. This is an, an excellent one. Um, we see this boy's become a man. And what I like about this second image in relation to, to this third image is a sense of progress and that things are getting better. The stoop has been redone, fresh coat of paint, working, independence, it's awesome. Football player to police officer father to proud father. So this image actually has, uh, there's a, a double image. We see in the center image of this man, a picture, a Rogovin style picture of someone we'll see later in the book. So I wonder if there are two friends or uh, former husband and wife or something. What's interesting about he about this is that sometimes the dog is younger than him and sometimes it seems older than him. But there's a dog in all of these pictures. So here we see a, a wedding photograph, then a split, so something's happened. Um, man in fatigues, and then the wife with a husband, and then a family. I wonder if people were happy or um, depressed to see Rigovin come by sometimes because their, their lives changed so much, maybe for the better or the worse, since they saw him last. So many times people are holding up photographs that show a proud moment of them. Uh, 
This guy's awesome. Wearing his hat. Alone and then surrounded by family here. Those boots, those heels. So the photograph of the man with the dog has this same print inside of it. And so I wonder what the relation is between that man with the dog on his lap and, and this woman. But it's fun to find those in this book, those references towards one another. She's got several photographs behind her. Another interesting point is the Rocky poster here. And then this kind of fantasy uh, sci-fi art here. It's like almost like a change in representation of men. It's just like watching, it's so cool to see the progression and family size and growth. It's inherently positive. This is a great one. Um, uh, family, children, and then grown family. And then here we see a single kind of, uh, a, sing a single person, a mother, proudly holding a photograph that encapsulates so much of her family. It's a great way to include them. I love that image. So this is the triptych for Milton Rogovin and his wife, Anne Rogovin. She was a special education teacher um, while he had the optometry practice which on Milton Rogovin's website, which is very well maintained, it, it indicates that he had to shut down his optometry practice from being blacklisted during the Red Scare and the House of Un-American Activities. So he later got an MA in American Studies and, and taught photography. But um, they included themselves in this body of work. And I love that. You see familiar characters. Often photographers of this generation would put technical aspects of the book at the end. Yeah. Milton Rogovin, Triptychs. To close out, um, what I really love about Triptychs is that it shows, uh, as I referenced in the video, almost a longitudinal study of uh, photography over time keeping up with the same individuals in the same environment, um, them knowing you and you knowing them. It shows a sustained curiosity and, and a perseverance that I think is really cool and unique in photography. Um, I also think it's worth noting being wear, wary of portraits, how much you draw from them. They're powerful and that's, that's why we should use them. Um, but just because you see a photograph of someone over and over, doesn't really mean that you know them or you know the whole story. Um, I think it's also, this book presents a good question of why is this a photo book? And so when I'm reviewing books for the channel and thinking about what I want to highlight, thinking about the photo book as an intentional form and not just a capsule for photographs. I don't think this book could be, I think its penultimate form is a book because you turn pages and it's given a timeline through the page turns um, and you sit with a book uh, for a long time and you can return to it. Uh, so the, the content is given towards a book form, but uh, let me, if you have any questions, put them down in the comments. Uh, I'll put all my site, my citations and some information and links for you to follow.